Fox News has obtained an internal draft memo from the Department of Health and Human Services showing that HHS Secretary Javier Becerra is planning to roll back Trump era protections of religious liberty rights. That includes revoking the authority of the Office of Civil Rights that would prevent violations of religious liberty. The memo, supposedly from OCR to Becerra, expresses concerns that Trump might have expanded OCR's authority too much. I really believe that a government agency would complain about being given too much power. Yeah, right. Well, during his confirmation hearings, Becerra swore to Congress that he would protect religious liberty, but his predecessor as HHS secretary, Roger Severino, said that HHS centralized authority over religious freedom claims because the laws weren't being enforced and because that's how we enforce every other civil right. Without dedicated staff responsible for investigating religious freedom complaints, HHS will return to trampling people's rights as before. If you don't think so, just ask the Little Sisters of the Poor, because Becerra was twice found to have violated conscience protection laws by OCR. And he's got no business deciding its religious freedom authorities, given his massive conflict of interest. Becerra told Congress that he values religious freedom and that nothing will change with OCR concerning enforcement. His actions since then prove that he lied. And this move would put an exclamation point on his anti-religious hostility. The big question remains, why would anyone who voted to, cons from, to confirm Becerra would believe that a man who is California Attorney General tried to railroad undercover journalists into prison on 15 felony charges just for exposing the nasty truth about Planned Parenthood give a flip about protecting anyone's civil rights. While HHS takes aim at your religious rights, the House Judiciary Committee released an email Tuesday provided by an FBI whistleblower showing that the agency's counterterrorism and criminal divisions are still taking aim at your parental rights by pressing forward with keeping tabs on parents who just happen to speak up against school boards and other officials. They've even created the threat tag EDU officials to track instances of such threats. Now the email acknowledges that this tracking of angry parents as domestic terrorist threat is in response to Attorney General Merrick Garland's outrageous letter that called for such a thing. A letter written in response to a letter from the National School Boards Association that we now know was created in coordination with Biden administration officials. Megan Fox at PJ Media examined the alleged threats cited in it and found that none were legitimate and the NSBA apologized for the letter. A little late. So far, 11 states have withdrawn from the NSBA. 26 have distanced themselves from it. Yet despite all that, plus Garland's denial to Congress that concerned parents will be monitored as domestic terrorists, this email confirms that that's precisely what the FBI is doing. The inescapable conclusions are that Merrick Garland is a politicized hack and a bald-faced liar, and Americans need to elect politicians who not only remove him from office, but who clean out the FBI and DOJ like the snake pits that we've discovered them to be. And speaking of all the things that this administration is doing to trample on your rights, Let's talk about the Biden's Build Back Illegal Immigration Better plan. Someone just noticed that hidden away on page 1,647 of Joe Biden's $1.75 trillion Build Back Better spending plan is a little line in there to eliminate the need for a social security number to apply for child tax credits. A researcher for the Center for Integration Studies told Fox News, well, pretty obvious what'll happen. That would result in the government giving an extra $2.3 billion in payouts to illegal immigrants. While all the absurd policies that Biden has been pushing could be bad news for the non-elite in America in the short term, it's really bad for Democrat politicians in the long run. And you can expect even more retirements leading up to the midterms next year. For example, California Representative Jackie Speer announced that she's not going to run for re-election in 2022. 
becoming at least the eighth Democrat to abandon what many of them must surely be sensing is a sinking ship. As the predictable, predictable disasters caused by leftist policies multiply and the poll support collapses, many Democrats fear that 2022 is shaping up to be an electoral bloodbath for them. And it's all their own fault. They made the worst mistake that Democrats can make. They actually put their policies into effect. As long as they campaign like moderates and govern just enough to the left to keep government growing, cronies all enriched and donations rolling in, Democrats pretty much are set for life. But these Democrats made the terrible mistake of listening to whack jobs like AOC, actually taking socialist ideas seriously and imposing their agenda, all the way from open borders to massive spending to overweening government to defunding police to radical identity identity politics to shutting down the domestic fossil fuel industry. Now, if you don't want to become a whack job yourself, I got an idea. Subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell on this video and leave a like and a comment while you're at it. I also hope you'll join me tomorrow for the live stream. If you want more of my news analysis and commentary, don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. You can get it at MikeHuckabee.com. It won't cost you a cent. That's going to do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.